So is universal health coverage an opportunity to accelerate progress uh, to end AIDS and TB? I think first we have to uh, qualify the question because in some ways ending AIDS and TB specifically and other health priorities for that matter uh, and achieving universal health coverage are essentially the same thing. Um, after 20 years of unprecedented investment, uh, attention uh, and commitment to tackling AIDS, TB and malaria, um, one thing is clear, we have probably achieved all we can achieve using the current approaches. Um, more business as usual is unlikely to uh, take us further towards ending these epidemics. Um, we need to clearly do something differently uh, to move the dial in any meaningful way. And I would argue that there are three things that we need to do differently to achieve that. Uh, firstly, we need to approach health through a much more holistic model. And even thinking beyond universal health coverage, uh, and not just uh, individual diseases. And in my view, the best model we have currently available to us is one that's been put forward by WHO, uh, the World Health Organization, as part of their next five-year plan. Um, in that plan, WHO suggests uh, a three-part model for achieving uh, global health. In the first one, which really refers to universal health coverage, they're saying you know, the, the, there is a minimum package of uh, services, of health technologies, uh, and support that, that people need when they're accessing the health system. So that's the first part of the model. For the second part of the model, it really talks about health emergencies and uh, protecting vulnerable people who are particularly vulnerable at certain times. And when we think about health emergencies, we really talk, we, we think often about things like the current Ebola outbreak in uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo or you know, unstable post-conflict, post-disaster situations. And actually there are health emergencies happening all the time in most places. So I'm talking to you from Northern Thailand at the moment. It's the rainy season. I don't actually know if you can hear the, the rain uh, in the background. Um, but in the rainy season, vector-borne diseases such as dengue are a particular risk. We're also close to uh, borders with Myanmar, Laos, Cambodia, um, precisely the hotspots where drug-resistant malaria is emerging right now. So emergencies aren't necessarily these large-scale public health emergencies of international concern, but can be localised emergencies. And that's the second part of the WHO model. The third part is really related to general health and well-being as opposed to addressing ill health. And it's related to addressing some of the social, environmental, and commercial determinants of health. Uh, and again, uh, an example from here in Northern Thailand, just a few months ago, uh, Chiang Mai, where I'm speaking to you from, uh, was reported as, uh, as having the most intense air pollution uh, as anywhere in the world at the time. And what's the point of having a perfect health system when citizens are uh, exposed to such a toxic environment. I think so that's a, a good argument as to why we need this kind of well-being and other health determinants considered. Uh, similarly, one of the biggest causes of death and injury in Thailand is uh, road traffic collisions, largely caused by kind of lax enforcement of laws and drunk driving. Again, what is the point in perfecting a health system and universal health coverage when thousands of people die as a res on the roads each year. There's no point. So I'm drawn to this kind of three-part model of health because uh, this reflects the realities that affect people's health. This is how people see their own health, not as one disease or health issue, but as a complex web of factors that affect their health, well-being and vulnerability. And in my view, this is the only context in which ending AIDS and TB uh, can be accelerated. So the second thing I think we need to do differently is that individual countries need to uh, prioritise the health issues they will focus on. This means uh, prioritising certain areas of research, for example, so we understand a given health issue uh, or a given health problem more, or developing specific capacities so that we know that the entire health system is working properly. 
uh, and delivers the services, vaccines, medicines and support that people need. Because for too long, priorities have been set by a combination of national health planning and international concerns, particularly in countries most dependent on international development assistance for health. Um, and that is decreasing as countries take more responsibility for domestic financing of health um, and, and are taking more of the driving seat uh, more than ever in setting priorities. A, a colleague uh, commented to me recently that we shouldn't see health as a, as a zero-sum game, that we shouldn't uh, force uh, people or countries to choose between one health issue uh, or another. But the reality is that resources are finite, uh, priorities do need to be set, and that means di you know, difficult decisions need to be made uh, at certain times. And that should all be done, what I'm saying is that should all be done on the basis of rigorous uh, national planning and assessment, uh, which would include prioritisation of AIDS and TB and ending those diseases alongside all other kind of pressing health issues. So that's my second thing that I think we need to do differently uh, in order to, to really end uh, AIDS and TB. Um, the third area that I think must be improved is at the international level. And um, with multiple organisations and interests kind of vying for attention, vying for financing to make sure that their issue or focus has prominence, we've kind of inadvertently created a kind of an environment of competition among organisations. Uh, that means in reality that we quite often do pit one disease against another, AIDS against TB or cancer or diabetes uh, or vaccine present preventable diseases in children, for example. Um, and at the, at the international level, the very least I think that countries should expect uh, is that these international organisations collaborate, partner and think together um, in close partnership and a new, um, a, new in, a new global initiative that started over the past six months or so called uh, the Global Action Plan for Healthy Lives and Wellbeing for All um, seeks to improve the way and force these organisations to work more closely together. Um, originally requested by the governments of uh, Norway, Germany and Ghana, we will hear more about this plan and it will be kind of revealed at the high level meeting on universal health coverage in September. Um, this should bring a new level of thinking together, of dialogue among these 12 UN, UN and other agencies so that countries can depend on uh, consistent and aligned support from across the international system. That's really important. So these are the three major things we need to do differently to make tackling global health issues such as TB and AIDS uh, more feasible. They include universal health coverage, but we need to go beyond UHC to have any real chance of succeeding against these diseases and achieving health for all. So, so let me return to the original question which said, is universal health coverage an opportunity to accelerate progress to end AIDS and TB? Well. UHC specifically, I would say yes, but it's a limited opportunity on its own and to have any real chance of success against the most pressing health issues countries that countries, communities and individuals face, including TB and AIDS, we will be by thinking about health in a much broader way, in much the same way as the WHO Three Billions Plan uh, does. It should be a plan for global health, I think, not just for WHO. So apologies that I can't be there in person today to uh, take any comments or questions. Um, I'd be happy to do so uh, remotely and I'll include my email at the end of the presentation uh, so you can do so, so you can send me any questions or thoughts you might have. Uh, thank you and I hope you had a very uh, productive conference uh, there in Mexico. Greetings from Chiang Mai in Thailand.